Sunday Roundtable, as you can see, is President and Accounted for. Joining us this morning, Democratic political analyst Marianne Marsh and Republican political analyst Rob Gray. Great to see you guys, as always. We, we, were, we were just talking about the North End and the, and the restaurant situation in the North End and the controversy in the North End between the owners and the City Hall. It, is, is Mayor Wu on top of the situation, or could it become the business equivalent of trench warfare, Marianne? Well, Michelle Wu is listening to the residents of the North End. She won the North End overwhelmingly in her election, and that th this is what they want. So she's listening to them. However, the restaurant owners, most of whom don't live in Boston, let alone the North End, thought if they went to City Hall and literally started banging their hands at the security desk, they would get their way. That didn't happen. So now they filed a, a lawsuit saying they're being discriminated against because they're white Italian men, and they made that announcement on International Women's Day in Linfield. I rest my case. <laughs> she rested her case, Rob, but you know. Well, she's right. I, I think the mayor's on very solid ground here. Uh, the lawsuits, the restaur restaurateurs are loud, but their lawsuits are ineffective. Uh, it just doesn't work. And let's apply common sense, which I think the mayor has done. It takes three steps to cross the street in the north end. That's not true of other neighborhoods like the Back Bay, where there's space to do out there outdoor dining. North end's going to have to get used to it. They got a huge bonus in COVID, being able to kind of take over public space and expand their restaurant footprint. That's not true anymore. But, but, but as Shugun said this morning, that, that it, is, it is just for this year. So they're, they're still they're working room on it. To well, work listen, on you, it. you have to get fire There's trucks. There's no room to cross the street. Fire right. trucks have to be able to right. get down right. the street right. and put out fires, right. okay? And right. restaurants can't block them. And that's Got how it. it was during COVID yeah. and recently. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, let's move from City Hall to Beacon Hill. And real potential for yet another pitched battle. State Auditor Diana DiZoglio, she says she will audit the state legislature. She says transparency is her goal. And the state house is too often a closed door operation. How ugly could this get, Rob? Well, it could be a clash of the titans. But the, the question is, will she follow through? And let's remember, she's a former state legislator. She has enemies and she has friends in the legislature. Will she treat them equally? We don't know the answer to that. That's a challenge for her. This thing could boomerang and blow up in her face. Mm, we don't know if they're going to cooperate, Marianne, either. Well, already you've seen Speaker Mariano hardly excited about this. Mm -hmm. Senate President Spilka didn't open, you know, greet this with open arms either. And it has the potential to really bollocks things up at the state house when you have a new governor, a new legislature trying to get a lot of things done. To Rob's point, to me, it seems like she's trying to do things she couldn't do in the House or in the Senate. And she talked about this under the campaign when she was running. She said she could do it. Suzanne Bump, the auditor of their time, said, you don't have the jurisdiction. She said, well, nothing says I can't. The Senate president is saying she doesn't have the right. jurisdiction, and the Senate president looks very bad saying that. So we already see how the atmospherics of this are playing out. Yeah, I mean, there's really not many other states where the, the Senate president and the Speaker of the House and the governor are exempt from public records laws. Right, Worth but, mentioning. but she should be much more clear about what this is. Mm -hmm. Next item, rent control, stabilization, whatever it is. The vote was not close by an 11 to 2 vote. The Boston City Council voted in favor last week of bringing rent control back to Boston. A win for Mayor Wu for sure, but Marianne, it's not going anywhere on Beacon Hill, so why throw so much time and energy at this? So, Eddie, you're telling me that the same people who said this yes. would never pass the City Council right. in Boston and it passed 11 2 are the same people who say it's going nowhere at the State House. That's what I'm saying. And they're spending $400,000 and that's just a down payment if this goes statewide, which it will. The fact is not only Boston, but every city and town in Massachusetts has a housing problem. The quickest way to keep people in their homes, do rent control while you're building more affordable housing. And every state legislator knows that too. If it gets to Maura Healy's desk, I bet she signs it. Rob? I mean, just how out of touch is the Boston City Council? I mean, 11 votes for this. Are, are they going to put price controls on coffee and donuts next? I mean, it is uh, the political body interfering with the private market it was a disaster the last time it was here. It's a disaster in other parts of the country. It won't happen. I mean, the legislature will enact common sense on this, I we'll think. We'll see. All right, mobile sports betting is here. Download a sports book app, and you can wager on just about anything. This poses the first major threat to the state lottery in history. What do you think, Marianne? Could mobile betting send the whole lottery system back to the drawing board? Well, sports betting is going so well here already at the casino. <laughs> okay, yeah, so that, that's a whopping success. Um, I'm just going to point to what Deb Goldberg said on this show a few weeks ago, which she said, "Look, I don't. Exp it'll be a ding, a dent, maybe. They do 35, 50 million. Lottery does 30 billion. That's what you have. So she doesn't see it as a threat. We'll see." All right, what do you think? Well, listen, the state's going to get a ton of revenue out of this, and that's why they did it in the first place. 
they don't care about the societal ills that are going to come from this. We've already seen it with marijuana, you know, uh, pets and kids being poisoned. Um, but, but the media in the state is in love with the revenue, whether it's advertising or tax revenue. So the teenage kid who works for four hours and then blows it betting that night on a game, that's going to be coming down the pike. But so the revenue, be careful. The revenue pales in comparison to the lottery, though.